Chief fighting, please do not hit your neighbor. <laughs> So yes, I am uh, Diane Bailey. I am a personal trainer. I own a studio in Denver. It's a private personal training studio where we do one-on-one -on -one sessions and we teach Tai Chi. Um, like I told you in there, my background is 22 years in the martial arts. I am a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo. Uh, along the way I studied, I started in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm a grappler. Um, rolling around on the floor, which is way fun. Um, <laughs> and I st also studied Krav Maga. I studied American boxing. I've taught kickboxing for 18 years, and I've done Tai Chi for 11 years. And I have to tell you that when I first started Tai Chi, I really didn't like it. It was so slow. And I like to punch and kick. I like to impact. I want to be there doing the jumping. But I persevered. That's what I put on my second degree belt and on my third degree belt was perseverance. And I kept with it. And now 11 years later, I really understand what Tai Chi can do for not only my clients, but for me. It really is that balance, that yin and yang, <laughs> if you will, of it's a great balance to my hard style. I still punch and kick things, but then there's the Tai Chi, which helps my body a lot. So now at, at my fourth degree black belt, I put peaceful warrior on there so that I'm, I'm a different person. So today we're gonna do some Tai Chi. We're gonna do some movement. I'm gonna teach you some moves. That's why I asked you to um, put your stuff down at the edge. Um, I hope that you're looking forward to moving. I'm glad that Sue is having you move as well, but we're all active people. It's sometimes very hard at conferences just to sit. So you will be doing some Tai Chi. I'll be teaching you just some of the background of Tai Chi. And then also we'll, I'll be letting you know about the open the door to Tai Chi system if you choose to learn some more about that as well. Does that sound good? Okay, good. So first we're gonna do what we call, come on in if you want. Oh, yeah, that's you. <laughs> First, I just want you to shift your weight. Just stand and shift, stepping side to side. Now, this seems really easy, and it seems really like, yeah, Diane, this is easy, duh. But in Tai Chi, it's very important to shift your entire weight all the way over to one side, all the way over to the other side. What in Tai Chi we have what we call columns. There's one column right down the middle of your body. There is a column from each shoulder through each hip. And we want to keep those columns intact. And this is a great way to teach your clients about posture. So when you're shifting that weight, you want to shift it all the way over to one column and then shift it all the way over to the other column. As you're talking to your clients, and you ask them, you know, shift their weight, sometimes they'll do this, right? And, and they'll shift like this. Well, that's not what we want to do in Tai Chi. We want to have all the weight over and all the weight over. Now, as you're on one side, if the weight is on, let's, let's everybody, um, let's go to your right. I know I'm on my left, I'm mirroring you. Go to your right, bring that right hand up and the left hand underneath. It's as if you're holding a ball and this move is called hold the ball. <laughs> They're not all that intuitive. <laughs> okay, now shift to be to your left. Now you're bringing your left hand high and your right hand is underneath. Shift, holding the ball. Oh, you guys are good. Shift. And one more. Excellent, good. So now, I told you I teach Tai Chi in my studio and we advertise on Facebook for our Tai Chi classes. Facebook is great, by the way. This was an actual comment on one of our um, advertisements. It said, what? Is everything foreign now? Whatever happened to American exercise? And my first thought was, what's American exercise? <laughs> I really can't name that, but that's okay. <laughs> So my comment back to this person was, yes, 
Tai Chi originated in China. Absolutely, that is correct. But Tai Chi has been proven to reduce blood pressure, to <coughs> improve sleep quality, to increase agility and flexibility, to reduce falls in older adults. Why wouldn't I want to use it for my clients? You know, I want to help as many people as possible. So, of course, I'm going to use Tai Chi. Now, what this comment really shows is, is that there's a certain amount of prejudice, but a lot of misunderstanding. That's really what it is. It's, a, it's an ignorance of what really is this all about. And part of the blame lies with the martial arts community, of which I am a member, right? We've shrouded it in mystery. We've said, no, 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 you can't teach Tai Chi unless you've learned from a master, and that master has to be part of the lineage way back to the original Tai Chi instructors. Well, to me, that's bunk, because Tai Chi is so important for this demographic that we want to serve that I want to open the door to Tai Chi and that's why I created the open the door to Tai Chi system that you can learn Tai Chi it doesn't take years it doesn't take lineage you can learn it and that's part of what my mission is is to bring Tai Chi to the everyday person through this open the door to Tai Chi system so we're going to answer three questions what is Tai Chi, why use Tai Chi, and how to use Tai Chi. So the first question is, what is Tai Chi? Tai Chi is a martial art that utilizes gentle flowing movements to enhance health in the body and the mind. So let me say that again. Tai Chi is a martial art. Tai Chi is a martial art. It is not just flowing movements, however you want to move. <laughs> it is a martial art. These movements are based in martial arts moves. And that's part of what I like to teach you is to understand what is the basis of the movement. Tai Chi is a martial art that utilizes gentle flowing movements. Yes, they are gentle flowing movements. Remember, it started as a fighting style hundreds of years ago and now it has moved into this movement meditation as we call it gentle flowing movements but the purpose of those gentle flowing movements is to enhance health in the body and the mind so the first real movement now I know you learned hold the ball wasn't that fun <laughs> now you're gonna learn wave hands like clouds so this one is you know I told you all the names are not all that intuitive so I want you to take your right hand and just make a clockwise motion with your right hand and you're just flowing good now instead of using just the arm and moving from the shoulder I want you to move from the torso and make that sorry that was me make that circle using your whole body in Tai Chi Rotation is incredibly important. The ancient manuscripts talk about rotation as massaging the internal organs and it feels really good, right? So now I want you to take your left hand, draw a counterclockwise circle. And use that torso to move. And now you get to put it together. So now as that hand comes down, bring the other hand up and you're flowing, this is called wave hands like clouds. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> it's clockwise with the right, counterclockwise with the left. If you think about wiping your eyebrows, this is the movement, that's how you're doing that. Wave hands like clouds. Very nice, good. So this is everybody's favorite move in Tai Chi. Let me tell you, they love this one because it's, it's hypnotic and and until it explained exactly what you're doing in a martial arts application, it's actually very violent. So, <laughs> but the next thing that I want to teach you is called pushing chi. So in Tai Chi, chi is energy. We move from the Dantian. The Dantian is two inches in from the belly button and two inches down. This is the center of your energy. From an exercise physiology standpoint, it's the center of your balance, right? So 
it's just a different way to look at things. I want you to bring one foot forward. I don't care which foot it is. Bring your hands to your hips and just rock forward and back. Try to keep both feet firmly on the ground. Good. And you want to try to move from the Dantian. Just like this, moving back and forth. Now bring that weight back. And I want you to bring your hands to the level of that Dantian. And now you're going to push forward and bring it back. This is called pushing chi. Push it forward and bring it back. Push it forward, good, and bring it back. Now, if you're moving from your Dantian, you're keeping those columns intact. You're not breaking the columns. Let me demonstrate. If I decide my focus is my hands and I move from my shoulders, this is what happens. And now my columns are broken. This is a really bad position to be in, not only from a martial arts standpoint. This, I definitely do not want to be attacking someone like this. Okay, but from just thinking about a postural, there's all this gravity right now on my neck, on my lower back. Everything is off, right? So come back up to pushing chi now. And if you think about moving from the Dantian, not from the shoulders, not from the hands, but feel that balance, feel how relaxing it is to keep those columns intact. And that's part of what we want, you can keep going, it's part of what we want to make sure we do with our clients is we want to translate Tai Chi to their real life and help them understand how keeping their posture in the proper columns is actually a relaxing thing. It's not ramrod military, right? It's the muscles can be doing what they're supposed to be doing if your columns are intact. So now bring the other foot forward. I don't care whichever side you were on. And we're going to do pushing chi again. And now I want you to breathe in as you come towards your body and breathe out as you push away. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathing is very important in Tai Chi. Actually, what is breathing not important in? <laughs> if you think about it, yeah. <laughs> it's everything, the breath is really important. And this is one of the easier moves to learn. Good, now in the Open the Door to Tai Chi system, we teach the Yang style 24 form. Um, like I told you before, Tai Chi started as a martial art. It has changed into the movement meditation. The Yang style is what that is. When you see people in a park doing Tai Chi, more than likely they're doing the Yang style. The long form is 108 moves. And when the Chinese people would pass that form down to their families, they would change just something. So there's many different iterations of the long form. So when the communist government took over, they said, wow, we really like Tai Chi, but ugh, 108 moves is way too much. So what they did is they took 24 pieces of the long form, put it into the um, short form and standardized it. So that's what we teach in the Open the Door to Tai Chi system is the Yang style short form. More than likely, if you see people in a park, that's what they're doing. Uh, so that allows our clients to join in, you know, when they're traveling or when they see somebody, they can do the Tai Chi. That's what we're teaching them is the most popular form. So now why use Tai Chi? These, this is a truncated version of the list on the Mayo website. There's many, many more benefits that they list. But if you look at this, reducing anxiety and depression, improving balance and flexibility, reducing falls in older, older adults, improves sleep quality, lowers blood pressure, increases energy, agility, and overall feelings of well-being. I think, and I don't know this for sure, but just if you Google studies on Tai Chi, you will get thousands and thousands of thousands of them. So as an exercise modality, I think Tai Chi is probably the most studied exercise. And these benefits are proven. But more specifically, what are we as trainers 
want to be doing with our clients. You know, it's not necessarily Tai Chi that we want to be giving to our clients. What, if you have done the functional aging specialist, you know um, the certification, you know the pillar of specificity. And this is a really important part of the functional aging training model, is this pillar of specificity. Most mature adults would say that one of the most important results that they would like to get from exercise is increased physical function. They want to be able to move better and easier with less discomfort and pain. Whether that means playing golf or tennis, traveling, enjoying hobbies, playing with grandchildren, performing yard work, or whatever it is that is important and enjoyable to them. So that's what they want, is they want increased function, right? They're, they're not necessarily wanting to be Tai Chi experts or weightlifting experts or whatever. They want increased function. And this is where Tai Chi really shines. Tai Chi, we're gonna go through these, don't worry, but just briefly, increasing balance, which we know is huge with our older adults, right? Improving balance, teaching them the concept of weight shifting, in substantial and insubstantial, being rooted and grounded, all of these things, we've already talked a little bit about columns and rotation. All of these things apply specifically to the function for our older adults. So I want to talk first about balance. We've talked, you know, falls are a horrible event in an older adult's life. It not only is a medical expense, but, you know, being laid up, not being able to do what they want to do, but it also increases the chance of them losing their independence. Once they have one fall, then it, they start to get scared and they start to lose their ability to do what they want to do. So we want to help them. But it's not just static balance. We just don't, we don't want to teach them to stand, look at a point on the wall and be balanced, right? We want them to move. <laughs> That's what they want to do, is they want to move. So last year at the summit, um, Dr. Deborah Rose was uh, speaking and she's the um, creator of the Fall Proof program. And she was talking about the belly button and teaching people to move from the belly button. So everybody stand about shoulder width apart. And now, without, but, well, by keeping your belly button right in the center, I want you to lift one leg and stand on one leg. <laughs> Bet you can't do it. <laughs> You gotta keep that belly button in the middle. It doesn't happen, right? And what her point was, is you have to teach your people to move that belly button, shift it over, and then you can lift, right? Shift and lift. So at lunch that day, I, I walked up to her and I said, you know, Dr. Rose, I'm so glad to hear you talking about, you know, that's what we do in Tai Chi. And she goes, exactly. That's where we got it. <laughs> so this is an important piece is to teach your clients moving from the Dantian. Remember I told you it's two inches in from the belly button, two inches down. She's talking about that same thing. So now we're going to go back to that shift, but this time I want you to lift your knee. So shift the weight all the way over that column and lift. And feel that balance if you can center yourself <laughs> over that column that's all right the earth moves <laughs> shift and lift good and feel how much easier it is if you get all that weight over and lift good now you're going to add a kick shift lift and kick now what i always teach in my classes do not kick him in the rear end. <laughs> what I always teach in my classes is it's not the height of the kick that's important. It's the fact that you're balanced. This can be a kick. This is a kick. That's, for some of my people, they still have to put their foot down. That's okay. They're moving towards understanding, shifting, and lifting. Does not matter how high your kick is. You don't have to do this. Okay, the important part is that you're balanced. 
this weight shift back and forth, engaging the core, moving from the Dantian. This is all specific to helping our clients increase their balance and be able to have more confidence. It translates to real life to what they want to do. I had a client who he came to me one day in class and he said, Diane, you've improved my golf game more than my instructor has. <laughs> and I said, oh really? Because I don't play golf. And, <laughs> and he goes, oh my gosh, just understanding that weight shift and letting it flow. He goes, you've improved my golf game incredibly. So Tai Chi was specific to what he wanted to do for his functioning. That was incredible to hear from that. I, I, was, I was so glad to hear that. Now we're, what I've taught you there is kick in Tai Chi. Now we're gonna move on. This is kick, smash, and box the ears, which I love that move because it's so openly aggressive. <laughs> kick, smash, and box the ears. <laughs> so you're gonna shift your weight, lift, kick, smash and then land and box the ears just like this good okay do it on the other side lift kick smash and box the ears yes good with kick smash and box the ears you don't really realize how much you need to be engaging the core until you start to talk about it because what happens, and I'll turn to the side, is you've got people that do this, they understand the columns, but then they do this, okay? Now all of a sudden I'm in that bad position again, right? I've landed like this, and I'm, I'm not in good posture, I'm not in control of what I'm doing. So you have to teach them lift, kick, smash, and now lowering your center of gravity lowering that foot and moving forward from your dantian. Kick, smash, and box the ears. This is the concept of being rooted and grounded. Being rooted and grounded does not mean your feet are glued to the ground. That's not it. In fact, these are my Tai Chi shoes, and you can clearly see where I've rubbed off the shoe is about ready to be toast because I pivot a lot. So my feet are not glued to the ground, but you have to be rooted. You have to lower your um, center of gravity. So I want you to try that kick smash and box the ears again and try it lowering that center of gravity and then stepping down and boxing the ears. So try that kick smash and box the ears while I put my shoes back on. Lowering your center of gravity and then moving forward from the Dantian. Good. That's a whole concept that we don't even think about. Now, think about translation into real life. Trying to reduce falls in an older adult. If you think about a parking lot with those concrete blocks that you pull up to, right? Easily tripped over, correct? If somebody just steps over like this they're not thinking and they drag that back foot what happens they fall right however if you have taught them shifting their weight taught them how to lower their center of gravity if you think about this i'm going to lower my center of gravity i'm going to step over this curb then i'm going to move from the dantian and now who cares if that back foot actually clips that concrete barrier, I'm centered, I, my weight is over here. So even if I clip, I'm not gonna fall. So it's very important to teach them this weight shift, to teach lowering the center of gravity. So now I'm gonna teach you a complicated, <laughs> that's, that's bad, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> this is, it, the ward off sequence has lots of moves and it starts from the hold the ball position. So I want you to start in that hold the ball position and, and you guys will be on your right. So you're gonna step out with that left foot. Now bring your left hand up 
and you're going to turn your body. Here's that rotation. You're going to turn your body and you're going to turn that back foot. Does anybody feel real awkward? Yeah, exactly. You got to turn that back foot because you have to pivot your entire body. So come back to that hold the ball. Good. Step out. And now pivot the entire body. And now drop your elbows just towards each other. And this is called grasp the bird's tail. Good. Now just roll back towards me. Good. And then rotate. And now you're going to come into that pushing chi that we've already learned. Pull it back and push it out. Good. So let's do that again. Holding the ball, you're going to step out. Ward off. This is that rotation piece. Grasp the bird's tail. Good. Roll back. Rotate. And pushing chi, you're going to pull it back. And then you're going to push out. Good. Let's do it again. And I'm going to call out things that you need to be thinking about. As you start, your weight should be shifted over that column. This leg should be completely insubstantial. There's no weight in it until you step out and now you're rotating think about that concept of rotation grasp the bird's tail now take inventory are your shoulders above your hips or are you grasping the bird's tail like this where now you've broken your columns you want to be able to grasp the bird's tail keeping those columns intact roll back rotation again bring it back and then pushing chi, think about moving from your dantian. Good, let's do it one more time. Holding the ball, you're gonna step out, ward off, grasp the bird's tail, stop for just a second. Think about real life again. How many times do we reach and put something in a cabinet or reach behind us? Right? We don't want people with something heavy, a box like this, doing this. Right? We want them to understand their body mechanics, that they can have, their grab, have themselves rooted and grounded. They have an in, a substantial leg that that weight is over. They can grasp the bird's tail, so to speak, <laughs> and then roll back. And they're not going to hurt themselves when they're doing their everyday life. And then roll back and pushing chi. Good. Now, we're going to move on to thinking about what I said with the functional aging specialist. You have the four cornerstones, you have the two pillars of, and then you have the seven key principles. These things are things that when we look at training older adults, these are things that we want to have in place with every aspect of training. And if you think about it, Tai Chi answers a lot of these seven key principles. Of course, I'm not saying Tai Chi is everything. I believe in weightlifting. I believe in resistance training. I believe in all kinds of different training. We need to have pieces. These are components that we can offer to our clients. This is something that is a piece of your training. And if you think about it, this number one Tai Chi training all components of function. We've already talked about weight shift and being able to rotate, even rotating on that central column. If you think about teaching people how to rotate, how to turn, yes, we're built to turn, but if you give them that idea of a central column, it makes it easier for them to turn in the way they're supposed to turn. Look at number three, integrating movement patterns, training in all three planes to prepare for functional demands. Of course, you're training in all three planes in Tai Chi. You've got transverse, you've got frontal, you've got sagittal, but you don't have to talk like that to your clients. You're teaching them moves and they're learning Tai Chi, which their doctors have recommended. Remember, they are being told daily in articles in newspaper and news um, on TV they're being told by their doctors they're being told by their physical therapists you guys need to take Tai Chi 
Number five, perform exercise move movements in a seated position only when absolutely necessary or when it serves a specific purpose. Stand up and stay up. 45 minute class of Tai Chi, you're standing the entire time. Yes, there are um, programs where it's seated Tai Chi. Now if that, if you have a paraplegic and yes, absolutely, you can do Tai Chi seated. However, you should, if you have four limbs that are able to be utilized, you should be standing. And doing a 45 minute class is a challenge for some of these people, but it's really good for them. That some of them just get so excited, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, that's the best hour of my day. That's, I, I actually did the entire class. <laughs> so, um, and then number seven, if you think about maximizing client safety and success by taking a holistic approach to training, there are people that either it's really true that they're too deconditioned or too infirm that really all they can do is Tai Chi, or it could be just in their mind that they think, I can't do anything else. But that doesn't matter, because if you have the option of providing Tai Chi, you'll attract those people. And they will feel safe. And that's important to people. They want to feel like their exercise is not hurting them. And as they learn Tai Chi from you, and as they get to know, like, and trust you, if all of a sudden they start thinking, well, you know, I'm watching you work with some of those other people and I want to try that resistance training too. You know, who are they going to think of? They're going to think of you. They're going to think, well, I trust this person. They're going to treat me well. They understand my needs, my issues. They keep me safe. And that's absolutely very important. But most of all, Tai Chi is fun. It's fun to learn a new discipline. It's fun to be challenged in different ways, to put different concepts together. They, they lose time and space. They're not thinking about, I'm exercising. They're thinking about, I'm learning Tai Chi and look, I can do the whole form now. And I, can, I have it memorized. It challenges their mental functioning too, to work on that memorization. It also works on crossing the midline, which I'm sure you've learned helps the brain, helps with working memory. It improves mental functioning when you cross the midline. So what I want to teach you now is I want you to take your right hand. Yes, I'm mirroring you. Take your right hand. This is called a bird's beak. The three fingers are with the thumb and you drop the wrist just like this. Now some people will try to tell you that this is what you're doing in a martial arts application, which is absolutely not true. <laughs> this is not the contact point. What you're doing is you're coming up underneath somebody's chin, just like this. <laughs> and this is where the contact point is. But this is a bird's beak. I want you to bring your weight over to this side. And now take this left hand around and step out and single whip. This is called a single whip. If you notice, come back to that bird's beak. Your weight is on your right. Bring that hand up and over. And you have just now crossed the midline. And you've made your body do two separate things. Right? You have to keep this bird's beak. And then you have to pull this into this block just like this. So making the brain have that neuromuscular connection, crossing the midline is essential, helping people improve their working memory. There are many studies that crossing the midline like this, wave hands like clouds, you're crossing that midline, that it does improve working memory. So now, I have a special surprise for you. <laughs> you guys actually know the whole middle part of the form. You don't know the whole form yet, but you know the middle part of the form. So now that I've shown it to you and I've mirrored it to you, I'm actually going to turn my back on you. Not literally. Well, yes, literally, but <laughs> I'm going to turn my back so that we'll be moving in the same direction. 
and I'm going to prove to you that you really can learn Tai Chi. Okay? So I'm going to turn my back and we're going to start with our weight on the right and you're going to hold the ball. You're going to step out with that left and ward off. Grasp the bird's tail. Roll back. Rotate. And pushing chi. Okay, now here's the surprise. You gotta do it on the other side of your body. Okay, so bring the weight to the right. Bring it back to the left. And now you're holding the ball to the left. Good, step out, ward off. Very nice. Grasp the bird's tail. Roll back. Rotate. Pushing chi. Good. Bring your weight to the left. Then bring your weight back to the right. Form a bird's beak with that right. You just learned this one. And then step out single whip. Very nice. Now we're going to wave hands like clouds and we're going to go that direction. So you might want to step a few steps this way. There you go. Okay. Now bring that left hand down. And the right hand actually pulls that right foot in. See, I didn't make you step with it before, but now you have to step out with that left and step in with your right. Step out with the left, step in with the right, forming a bird's beak again, and coming into that single whip. Good, now just follow me here. Bring that right foot up, right hand to the right temple. Shift your weight to the right, step out with the left, and you're just gonna cross hands, just like this. Now bring the weight back to the right, then back to the left, and you're gonna lift with that right leg, kick, Smash, thank you for not kicking my microphone and box ears. <laughs> there it is. You guys just did the whole middle part of the form. So don't tell me Tai Chi is hard to learn. I just taught it to you in half an hour. Now sure, you don't have it all ready to teach, you don't, but there are things that you can take back to your clients right away. You can take the concept of weight shifting. You can take the concept of rotation back. The concept of being rooted and grounded and helping them with their balance. You can take that back next week and start talking to your clients about this. But what I really want you to understand is Tai Chi is not that hard to learn. It's understanding all of it together that makes you be able to bring it to your clients. So next, that is how to use Tai Chi. How to incorporate Tai Chi, <laughs> tai Chi into your personal training practice. And this is really the sticking point for most people. Where they go, yeah, Tai Chi is great. I really want to use it, but I don't want to be a martial artist. I don't want to take years. I don't want to adopt the whole martial arts lifestyle. So I'm just not going to do it. Well, that's why I created the Open the Door to Tai Chi system because I really want you to understand that you can learn it. It doesn't take five to 10 years. With the Open the Door to Tai Chi system, it actually only takes about three to four months. And I teach you Tai Chi, I teach you the form, and then I teach you how to teach it so that you understand those underlying concepts, which that's the key. Those underlying concepts are what bring the benefits of Tai Chi to your clients. So you really have two options in you want, if you want to bring, oops, bring Tai Chi to your people, you can start a class, you can incorporate it into your personal training sessions, or you can do both, which is what I do in the conditioning classroom, which is my studio in Denver, is we have classes, but we also use Tai Chi in our one-on-one -on -one training sessions too, the concepts and the actual moves. So the first option, um, get certified and start a class. Now, you know, when I say you can learn Tai Chi and you don't have to learn from a master, you still have to have some kind of training <laughs> in order to teach it. You still have to be an expert in your community so that people will be drawn to you. And that's what that certification is about, is just becoming an expert and proving to your people that yes, I do know it.
okay? But in the open the door to Tai Chi system, we teach you the moves, you get to learn all the moves, you, then we teach you all the concepts underneath, balance, the concept of substantial and insubstantial, the concept of being rooted and grounded, the breathing part of it. We teach you the martial arts application of all of these moves so that you understand what you're doing and so you can teach that to your people. All of this and so you say, great, now I understand all those concepts, but how do I start a class? I've never done a class. Well, that's part of what the um, Open the Door to Tai Chi system is about as well, is we give you class plans. I've been doing this for years. I have 24 done for you class plans, all written out, you know exactly what moves to do, how to teach them, so that you have a jump start, that you're not just teaching moves, that you really are teaching Tai Chi. You can get certified to understand Tai Chi and start using it in your everyday sessions. <coughs> It's not just for a class, you can incorporate this into almost all of your training. We have a lady who, uh, long story short, she had abdominal surgery. When she was let out of the hospital, she was told don't stand up. And she said, oh, yeah, 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 I'm a nurse, I know. And she stood up too soon. And she woke up three months later. Mm -hmm. She was in a coma. She'd split open, they were unable to sew her back together. Eight years it took her to be able to learn to walk again. And at that eight year point was when she came to us. And she said, okay, I can walk, but going up and down stairs is almost impossible. And if I walk, if I have to take a step backwards, I fall over. So we taught her Chi walking, which I didn't teach you guys, but it, it is part of the Open the Door to Tai Chi system. We taught her Chi walking, and now she walks up and down stairs without holding onto a banister. She can walk backwards. She's stepping up onto steps. It's awesome. Okay, so you can utilize, she never took Tai Chi from us. We just used Chi walking with her to help her. You can use it at the end of a session as like the translational motor learning part of it. You know, you can talk about um, stepping over a curb, just like what I was talking about and using that weight shift and showing them how to do that. Uh, you can use it at the beginning of a session to warm up, to start that neuromuscular connection. You can use it in place of in addition to, you know, you might have resistance training with a one-on-one -on -one client and then every once in a while start in, uh, do a Tai Chi session with them instead of a resistance training session. I have a client who she suffers from horrible migraines, horrible, horrible migraines. And there are times when she comes in and she's like, you know, I, I can feel it. It's, it, I'm trying to manage it. And, and those are times where I'll just turn on a dime and we'll do what her son says is Chinese yoga. <laughs> do, do Chinese yoga. <laughs> but we'll do, a, we'll do a Tai Chi session and by the end of that session, because of the relaxation that is involved with Tai Chi, she can feel like, okay, I'm managing this and, and it, the migraine hasn't taken hold. So that's, some, a, that's a huge benefit for your clients. I think that understanding the opportunity, like I told you in the large session there, the opportunity that we have now is huge. There are so many people being told to take Tai Chi and not enough instructors. So if you can just take that and think about how do I add Tai Chi to what I'm doing, you're gonna be opening up your doors to people that would never come to you otherwise. Uh, I believe that Tai Chi is one of those modalities that as our population ages, uh, I think it's gonna be kind of like soccer, where, you know, when I was growing up, we, we didn't have soccer. I, I was, I mean, holy cow, we, we had softball, but my sister, who is four years older than I, 
am. She, she and I were on the same team. So that's how old I am because there weren't enough girls playing softball. <laughs> but there was no soccer, right? But now everybody's doing soccer. All the kids are doing soccer. It's awesome, right? Because we figured out that it's a great sport for all different shapes and sizes, for all different abilities, for boys, for girls, right? We do soccer. I think that Tai Chi is going to be like that in the future, that everyone is going to be doing Tai Chi and they're going to be understanding how much benefit they have for their bodies. You think about that growing population of what Cody and Dan were talking about, how many baby boomers we're going to have, how many people over the age of 85, what was that? More people over the 80s, age 85 than under five? Was that what he said? You know, that's amazing. So you're on the, right on the verge of a huge wave and Tai Chi can be a big part of that. So I wrote the book, Open the Door to Tai Chi, Tai Chi for the Everyday Person. Each of you will receive a copy of that book. I really feel it's important for the everyday person to have Tai Chi available to them. And we will have the certification available soon. Because you've come to the conference, because you've come to this session, we have your email addresses. If you didn't sign that sign-up sheet, please come to me and I'll get your email address and we'll give you advance notification. Because you're part of this, we are gonna give you a discount for if you wanna go through the certification as well. So you have that opportunity. Um, so please make sure that I have your information so that I can give you that advance notification. Any questions at all? Yes. I just wanna give a little testimonial. I was a beta tester for this Open Door to Tai Chi last year and um, I went through all the modules and I even flew to Denver and did a class with her. And I can tell you that I use it with clients. I didn't teach a class because I have too many classes I'm teaching. <laughs> uh, but I will transfer and switch to that. But she, every video was very succinct and very easy to follow. And the class plans, I mean, she gives it to you everything. And she even tells you what to teach. And she tells you what you need to say. So it's really a no-brainer. I, I just thought it was great. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And thank you for being a beta. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Yes? So Tai Chi versus yoga. I mean, I've got a lot of people think I'm going to do yoga as my... Very different. Yeah. They're, they're very different. Um, tai Chi, like I said, is standing all the time. Okay. Yoga, you have postures on the ground or lying down or wherever, inverted. There are no inversions in Tai Chi. Um, tai Chi is a martial art. Tai Chi is a form. Um, it is a move. The 24 moves move in exactly the right order. Okay. Um, as opposed to Qigong, which is very similar to chi Tai Chi, where Qigong is more separate movements and you're actually encouraged to do those movements in different order. Tai Chi is an order, um, and what I like to say is it's not a, a horizontal learning event, it's a vertical learning event to where you learn those 24 moves, but you're not done. In fact, you're just beginning. Then you start to layer on those concepts of breathing and rooted and grounded and columns and the martial arts application. You have more and more and more to learn, which is why my students come back year after year after year. I'm, yeah, they all know the 24 moves, but that's, that's not the end of it, that's the beginning of it. Yeah, so Dina, you had a question. Yeah, so um, do you have to warm up to start? You said to use it as a warm up? As a warm up. Uh -huh. Well, in, when, I start a, when I'm doing a class, we'll do what we were just doing side to side. We'll hold the ball. We'll do pushing chi. Well, I go through in my classes the different moves. Just because you know the moves doesn't mean I can't teach you something about that move. So will I do a warm up in class, but it's utilizing the movements because they are so gentle. Yes, you had a question? No? So what's the certification process? Is this in person? It is online. Okay. Um, it, it is 16 modules online where the eight for eight first modules are you're learning Tai Chi, and the last eight models you're learning how to teach Tai Chi. Okay, and so then the test. and then there is a test, and it is online. Yes, 
I, I would love to have an in-person component. Um, and in fact, I'm talking to Lorna now that she said she had that Skype component to hers. Um, I may very well add that, I don't know yet, but um, I would love to be able to, certainly with certification, you have access to me to ask questions. You know, that, that I want to help people. So, yeah, there was a question over here. No? That, and that cost factor right now is up in the air. So, um, it's not going to be hugely expensive, but... <laughs> Other question? I have a question. Yes. I'm interested in Tai Chi because I was told that in Qigong are a form of meditation and I have a pretty active crowd. Uh -huh. I could never get to sit. A lot of business people. Uh -huh. And I think this would be a great way. Am I wrong? Uh, no, it'd be absolute. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in fact, what I, what I call it movement meditation. Mm -hmm. And um, I tell people when I'm talking to them when they're coming in um, new to Tai Chi is I, I don't teach meditation in Tai Chi. I, I don't teach meditation. But there is a definite meditative effect. Okay? You have to be in the moment or you're going to lose your place. <laughs> You, and that happens almost every single class. You know, the people will come in, they're chatting, they're, I've got this going on, or oh, my back hurts. Or, and by the end of class, they're all like, oh, life is not so bad. I can handle this. So there is a definite meditative effect. So good, it'd be the, great. The one client that I use this with all the time, he is a, um, um, a CEO of a large corporation. And, when, and he's a large man. So when we meet, every time we meet, before we start, I take his blood pressure. And if his blood pressure is too high, we do the Tai Chi. But every meet, yeah. every time I meet, we take his blood pressure first and see what we can do from there. He, he, was, he calls it Chinese yoga. Chinese yoga. <laughs> yeah. It's not Chinese yoga. Story. It's not yoga. <laughs> So any other questions? I want to make sure that you guys have enough break time. I know there's a break right now before we go back to the main stage. So um, please come up to me. Make sure that I can get your, um, I, I have an email address sign up list on the booth in the room there. So please come to me if you did not give me your email address for signing up for the class. But please come up and get a book and thank you very much. Thank you. So, there you go. Thank you. Thank you.